Welcome back to WRPL, the podcast where we talk about all the things we are watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name is Ben. And I'm Steve. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing well, Ben. Good. How about you? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well as well. Got got a good amount of stuff today. Uh, we've actually watched a lot of stuff together this week. Um, so we have a couple of main topics. We're going to talk about missing. We're going to talk about playing. We're going to talk about The Last of Us, Episode 2. Uh, I wanted to start... With something I consumed, a new new candy hit in the market. It is called Marshmallow Crispy Treat M and M's. Did you have this? No, but it sounds like something for children. <laughs> it sounds like pure sugar, and it sounds. I mean, I'm a big fan of marshmallow, but uh, it sounds gross. It's just Rice Krispie Treat M M&M. and M, and I was like, well, they already have a crispy, so what's the point of this? Well, it's white chocolate with a crispy middle, and it has marshmallow flavor. It's pretty good. It It's a pretty good facsimile of a Rice Krispie treat. Uh, I'm a big fan of the crispy M&Ms. They're like number two, maybe maybe three on my, on my list. So yeah, these were pretty good. They're the smaller ones. They're not very big. Hmm. But uh, for for something, something new, you know, it's pretty good. Can I go on a mini rant here? Go for it. I just want to say... Uh, and maybe you've had a different experience. Uh, I, I enjoy a Rice Krispie treat. Um, and every now and then go to some like party or something like that. And someone's just like, Hey, we got homemade Rice Krispie treats. And then I'm like, Ooh, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm disappointed. Really? Uh, yeah. It's not that they're like gross. It's just that they're always harder than I want them to be Hmm. or they're not as sweet. I've, I've never met someone who like, just really nailed the Rice Krispie treat. But you get the Rice Krispie treats from the store, they're great every So you like time. the prepackaged kind, you don't like the homemade kind. I mean, I would love to have great home homemade ones. It always mm. just feels like I'm like I really have to like gnaw it's like uh, eating a steak or something. I have to really like gnaw into it to get the like my saliva to soften it up enough. Okay, where, like so Rice Krispie treats I feel like almost melt in your mouth, you know. Yeah, yeah. You have ones that have been sitting out and have really hardened. Last time I made Rice Krispie treats, I put little extra butter and marshmallow to uh, the Rice Krispie treats. So it, it fell apart a lot easier. It was a lot gooier. Yeah, I it was much Give better. me the goo. I want the gooey. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got to go a little, whatever it says on the package, just go a little more on the marshmallow and you'll be fine. And also, if you eat it relatively quickly after you make it, it's still kind of, if it's still a little warm, it falls apart a bit more and it right, doesn't right. solidify into a hard brick. But... Oh, do you, have you ever made them at home yourself? No, of course not. No, not even with like, like Fruity Pebbles or like Golden Grahams or any other cereal. I mean, there may have been a time when my mom made them when I was a child, but mm. I don't recall that. They weren't a... Uh... It's, it's a three ingredient thing. It's, it's super easy to make. I recommend going nuts. I did it with uh, Captain Crunch. Mm. That was fucking good because the yellow pieces of Captain Crunch are so good. You know, like Crunch, say what you will about Crunch Berries. You know, I, I'm not the biggest Crunch Berry fan. I like I think the yellow pieces are better and they make an excellent crispy treat. All right. Cool. Well, where do you want to start? Uh, do you want to just do like the basic stuff, the things that we only watched? Or should we jump right in and do Last of Us right away since we just got done watching? Uh, yeah, let's just do Last of Us first because okay. I feel like we'll, we'll start every episode roughly with Last of Us. Sure. And then maybe when the season's over, do like a retrospective episode. Yep. Thoughts and hopes for the future and all that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. <clears throat> but before we do that, we got to roll. Oh, yes. All right. Go, Steve. Go. Not twenty. That's six. Oh god! I jinxed myself. All right. Well, maybe. Oh god! Maybe, oh god! Maybe we switched. Okay. I have to get at least double digits. I, I think this is a, a twelve. Three. Holy shit! Oh my god! That is now four weeks in a row that I've been under six. I think. Uh, I think the dice gods are speaking to you. And it's like, maybe the answer is just to give you a different dice, but uh, then again, it's like, I kind of want to see how long this lasts. I don't want to change uh, yeah, the variables. Yeah, no, no, you don't change it. That's the dice we use for the rest of the year. Yeah, I went three, one, four, three. Wow. Yeah. If we were playing Dungeons and Dragons right now, you'd probably be dead. Well, the one time that we did play Dungeons and Dragons, I was really shit at that too. I always rolled low. <laughs> and I remember just kind of like 
running into, uh, like, run through the doorway and see what's behind and fell into a trap and then rolled so <laughs> low that I couldn't get myself out of it. All right. Last of Us 2 episode. Last of Us 2. Last of Us, the TV show, episode 2. There you go. Uh, did you catch the name? Uh, I did not. Okay, whatever. Episode two. It doesn't matter. The one where Tess dies. Spoilers! <laughs> As always. One thing I wanted... Well, okay, I gotta start off. I owe you an apology, Steve. <laughs> you were I, right. I wasn't gonna bring it up. <laughs> the giraffes happen after the snow, but, like, who cares? We were both right in some way. Let's just move past it. No. <laughs> That's not true at all. <laughs> Uh, one thing we didn't bring up last week, we n- never talked about like the intro credits. Those are some awesome intro credits. It's mm-hmm. simple and just like seeing the fungus spread out as like a, a skyline. City? Yeah, yeah. And then you see it, it's the map of America as it's spreading across that. Then it's kind of like a face screaming, laying in the ground. And then just Joel and Ellie. Just real simple, just fungal growth with the classic twangy guitar and it's just beautiful Mm -hmm. and it doesn't overstay its welcome it's not too long you know like i love the game of thrones theme but after a while it's just like all right let's keep going especially when they're not jumping to new places i mean the only thing that saves that game of thrones intro is how different and interesting it is like you're looking at the whole map and the fact that it's like popping up like Mm -hmm. i think that intro won a bunch of what i I think there's an emmy for like intros Mm -hmm. and i you know, I'm sure this one, I'm sure The Last of Us will win. Let, let me recommend a video. I, I recommended his channel uh, a while ago. His name is Leo Vader. He does uh, fun things like, did were they filming the turtle scene from Master of Disguise on 9-11? Um, who's a better invention e- uh, inventor, Elon Musk or Wallace and Gromit? Uh, just like weird topics. And he has one about prestige television intros uh-huh. and how some of them are like bing, bing, boom, quick to the point. And some of them are just shots of the city that's kind of out of focus or sped up a little bit. Remember Lost? Yeah. Wow. Yep. He, he mentions Lost yeah. and how, how <laughs> simple and effective it is. Uh, it's, it's a fun little look because... Uh, there seems to be only a few houses that do these sort of intros mm. and like the game of thrones one that was whatever house was doing that that was one of their first big things they ever did and that blew them up so much i mean they won a ton of awards did you know they give out awards for intro for title cards i literally just said that like oh did you right before you started your oh, rant I listen to you Steve. i clearly I, I wait for you to stop talking so i can start talking <laughs> uh but yeah there's only so so many of them so they like I think the people who did the Westworld one also did Game of Thrones, you know, and when you start getting into a habit of working with these people for your big shows, you're going to go back to them again and again. Yeah, I mean, uh, if HBO is calling you and you knock it out of the park, it's like, yeah. just stick with HBO because, yeah. you know, you're just going to be part of good television mm-hmm. regardless. It, uh, Westworld's another one where, like, I really like it. It's really neat looking. Mm-hmm. Great song. Skip it every time because it's like two minutes. It's so fucking long. You know, d- d- doesn't need to be that long but let's talk about the episode yeah (laughs) pretty simple episode you know it really is just kind of a hey you remember this chunk of the game we're just gonna do that hey you remember these mechanics of you know taking your your partner and squeezing them through a rock so they could clear a passage to get through a door or walk across a board across two two buildings it's all just like fun little game mechanics and, and uh classic uh introducing you to monsters of the world and the rules of those monsters and done just like shot for shot perfectly absolutely beautiful what a what a great looking show yeah i'm interested to see what the uh internet will say not that it matters no uh, but i haven't heard anybody not a single person say a bad thing about anything of the show the closest from episode one from episode one yeah. so far yeah except just like you know what i don't like that this is really scary and that this could potentially happen. And I don't like that. <laughs> uh, but I'm interested to see what the internet has to say about the change from spores to mm-hmm. this like hive mind kind of uh, concept. Uh, I'm not against it. I'm interested to see how that plays out in the future. Um, Cause before we even watched this show, and I think I mentioned on the podcast, what I didn't want to see is bloaters throwing spore bombs. Cause yeah. I just thought that that's a video game thing. It'll mm-hmm. look stupid. It won't make sense that they're like so cognizant of like, they have this like special ability. Yeah. They, they're a weaponized thing. Uh, yeah. But if you have bloaters who are 
not not shooting out tentacles, but like it it makes sense that it's like oh they do have some sort of thought other than like kill violently. They're trying to spread the and, and if you're gonna s- take away spores from everything else, I'm okay with the bloaters being the one spore thing. Mm. This is the dangerous thing because it could run into your town and just start blasting everywhere and take you over in, in a matter of minutes. This is the a real threat where they have said you know spores would actually take over the whole world really, really quick. Yeah, a gust of wind would just blow it through your town. You're like, oh, I'm fucked now. So I I, I like that. I would be okay with a bloater, not necessarily throwing spore bombs, but if it it does just kind of every time it's walking and you see the little puffs come off of it, and when it starts running, it's puffing even more, (laughs) I'd be okay with that. Or like, if it's not necessarily doing that, but like you have a guy with a shotgun and the bloater surprise him and in you know close range he just freaks out and shoots it and then by shooting it sure. the spores yeah. shoot out from under its skin mm-hmm. that could be kind of a cool thing yeah um because wasn't it the bloaters spores were like so strong they were like instantly like burning your face kind of stuff or am mm-hmm. i i don't remember or are you thinking of the weird what was the other thing in part two the, the like the new bloater of that one wasn't there one that wasn't there because nah, <laughs> they introduced two. I talked ones. all this shit about playing these games so many times. It's like now that's all jumbled. And, uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I'm cool with the the spores being gone. But I will be interested to see how all this changes the dynamics of the rules of the world. And it's like, all right, well, you have to be careful every time you're walking anywhere. Is it just them going to be constantly like stepping on stuff by accident? Are they mm-hmm. going to like? push guys onto a thing so like they get rushed i i, I just want to see how they utilize this in the future or if it's just kind of like we're introducing this episode but we probably won't really mention it again kind of thing yeah I, I can see there being a oh crap we're trapped what are we going to do someone picks up a, a huge stone throws it off a building hits a patch of tentacles mm-hmm. and then redirects sure, the, sure, the right. swarm around a building which you know i, I mentioned as we were watching you know you got to be quiet around the clickers and, and Joel empties out his bullet casings and it's like, just flick one in the corner and it's going to go ding, ding, ding. And he's going to run that way and you're going to be OK. Like use use the sound to your advantage and maybe they'll get to it. But this just seemed like a perfect opportunity to just add another one of those things. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, a big part of that game was like picking up beer bottles and bricks to mm-hmm. distract them. So I'm yeah. surprised. We, um, what episode is he using a brick? Because he's got to pick up a brick and, like, yeah. either chuck it at one of their heads or, like, really smash. I can see that being an Ellie thing of running and just chucking a brick into someone's face as, like, they round a corner or something. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, beginning of the episode, we're in uh, Indonesia. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we yeah. see the, uh, you know, short time. Was uh, Do you remember the exact date of the first episode it was september yeah and in this episode it was september again but this is september 24th yeah was it like september 3rd or 13th it was 24th for here and it they you hear it in the radio in the first episode of them talking about bombings in indonesia oh so okay the the first episode had to take place afterwards gotcha okay and it's i saw a little thing about how it was bad crops that started this and they were talking about being in a like flour mill or something, mm-hmm. and that's what started. And that maybe Ellie, and not Ellie. I'm sorry. Uh, what's what's her name? Sarah. What's his daughter's name? Sarah. Sarah. So Joel and Sarah. They kind of uh, were lucky because like they were out of pancake mix, and they didn't eat the biscuits from the neighbors. They didn't get a cake. There was all these like things that use flour that would have been oh. infected. And that's one of the reasons why it spread so quick. Cause it like got into the supply chain. Uh, the world's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. The internet was right. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things I'm like, I don't know this. I'm not that clever. It's just like, Oh yeah, they didn't have pancakes. Okay. Moving on. Huh? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, we start and, uh, the, epidemiologist what's the term uh well she was a professor of mycology oh okay yeah and they're like hey there's this thing going on and uh i can sum it up real quick she goes oh fuck this sucks uh bomb the whole fucking place because there's no saving any of us uh yeah which is 
pretty messed up <laughs> and pretty scary that there's people who, I mean, it's not her job to, I guess, make that yeah, call. Yeah, she's not going to flip the switch. Yeah, but... She, but it's like, her recommendation is, yeah, kill everyone in the city right now. It's and nice that's that... like, that's that's scary. She has the integrity of like, I know what I'm talking about. And yes, this would hurt affect me as well, but we got to do this. Yeah. Um. We don't. We shouldn't talk too much about the episode because just because we have so much stuff, yeah, yeah. we don't have to like deep dive every. I was, but, but, but that's a good new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, was there anything else in this episode? I mean, the 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 hotel lobby, the museum, everything is just like perfect. Yeah, pulled straight from the game. Uh, it's yeah from a like production standpoint. I I really wonder what that was like in terms of. One, like making the show look the way it does in terms of like special effects and makeup and all that kind of stuff. But you have the game, which is kind of your storyboard. So you mm-hmm. just hand this to your production team and just say, hey, make this. But it's still like so impressive that you took something that just existed in a digital format and then you just you just built it again. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it was it was so weird seeing how accurate something is like. I'm not familiar with like arcane, but I know like League of Legends doesn't look like the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And we've seen book adaptations where we have like images in our mind or mm-hmm. like there's been like fan art that's been turned into stuff. But I don't know if I can think of anything where it's like there was something I had seen before and now it like exists in real life. Yeah. And it's so weird and so awesome. Yeah. And uh, the the show is just just killing. I can't praise it enough so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, not the most story-driven episode, but mm. you get a little bit more of how the monsters work and just a tease of how scary the world is. And we finally see the clickers, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait for more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, let's move on. So I, I'm going to start. I, hmm, which one do I want to do? What do you want? Do you want a show? Do you want a book? Do you want a movie? Uh. Do a show, and then we'll both do our books. Okay, cool. So I watched that 90s show. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that 70s show. Me too. I, I was a fan, and I figured, why not? The cast is coming back, or at least, you know, the ones who are alive or not in jail sure. uh, will come back. And, you know, Kitty and Red are such, like, fun characters. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was going to give it a shot. So the first episode, the pilot, is great. I was really into it. Uh, and, and it becomes a little more evident after the first episode because it's it's Eric, it's Donna, it's Kelso, it's uh, Jackie, and, you know, Red and Kitty. And they just fall back into those characters like nothing. Mm-hmm. But once they're gone... They're, you know, that's not a show about them. You're left with the new crew. You're left with the new kids. And although they are charming, they're not nearly as charming and likable. They feel a little more like carbon cutouts. Like, we need a Kelso type, but it can't be the, you know, Kelso's son. And we need someone like Fez, but, uh, you know, can't be exactly like Fez. Okay, and well, let's also make him. Let's make him the gay character, and uh, it's, it's like playing. Uh, uh, what's the the three card Monty or something? Or the you know, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you just shuffle up all the characteristics and traits of all these characters and split them off evenly, and you pretty much got the same cast with maybe like an an extra character. Uh, but for those who don't know, Donna and Eric, they've been married for years. They have a fifteen year old daughter, or she's turn she turns fifteen in in the season. Uh, they come to visit Grandma and Grandpa, Red and Kitty, and they're staying for Fourth of July. And her name's Leia because he named her after after Princess Leia. He's still a big Star Trek dork, but he's actually like Star Wars. Star oh, Jesus Christ, you're the worst. <sighs> he's a big Star Wars dork, and he's even like a teacher about like Star Wars studies. Like he's built his career on like theory on Star Wars. It's pretty funny. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad that they abandoned the like going to Africa thing with him. That was just very weird. So he's gonna take her to space camp, and she doesn't want to go. So she they decide okay, she'll stay with grandma and grandpa for the summer, 
And next door in Donna's old house is uh, this brother and sister combo. Their mom is kind of like a, a trash bag of a person. Um, they they have different fathers. So like she's black and he's white. He's kind of like the Kelso of the group. He's the big dumb idiot, but he's kind of like a, a fat jockey dude. He mm -hmm. has the Jackie girlfriend and she's like the brainiac of, of the group. And, and Kelso and Jackie, they had a son. He's also a handsome doofus, but not not nearly to that level. He's he's very smart. I guess he's like good in school, and right. he's also really hot and and a player. But he may have a heart of gold. And then uh, who else? Oh yeah, and then there's the 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 gay Asian character, the Fez character, who if this show came out twenty five years ago, it would have been played by Bobby Lee. So <laughs> okay. if you can imagine that yeah, with yeah, the yeah. kind of like, I don't want to say a stereotypical Asian accent, but like a gay Asian accent you, you and Bobby Lee doing that, you know exactly who this character is. <laughs> okay. uh, but it's not a bad show. I think Leah is, she's very good for being like the daughter of Eric Foreman, just mm -hmm. like kind of a dork and kind of a spaz. And uh, she's good. Everybody's it's, it's a little fake. They don't, it doesn't feel as natural sure. as the original cast, uh, but it's still like kind of fun. And I, ki I kind of liked it. Um, it's, huh. it's, it's not, not terrible. I mean, I haven't heard anything about it in terms of reviews or uh, what people are saying. I only watched like one brief clip of it and I was like, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you <laughs> would care. The, not that yeah. the clip was bad at all it was mm -hmm. just like oh okay this is kind of what i expected it to be okay oh and fez is still in it he still lives in town but he's kind of like a big shot he has his own salon where he does women's hair and uh he has fallen in love with the neighbor mom the mm -hmm. mom of, of the the two kids um and even though she's kind of like a, a trash person uh he's head over heels uh for her but i gotta say the original cast like red and kitty you could tell they're older but they still look pretty good but the kids, I, I'm sorry, you know, like Eric and Donna, yeah, yeah. not like the children right, in right, it. Right. Like, you forget how beautiful everybody on that fucking show is because they are kind of young <laughs> early, early on. But you sure. can tell like, oh, they're cute kids. They all grew up so handsome and so beautiful. It's it's ridiculous. That's they, what money does to you. That, like Ashton Kutcher, you look at him and go like, oh, yeah, of course you were a male model. And and yep. Wilmer Valderrama is just like stunning. Sure. Um Topher Grace, he's the most doofusy of them all, but yeah, he's still like a handsome dude. And then the women, of course, like have not, you know, they didn't fuck with their faces. They didn't like, you know, put lip fillers in or fuck yeah. with their noses. They're just gorgeous. And I enjoyed the show. I would recommend it to people, but I really kind of wanted it to be about the original cast, even if it was just an, a two hour movie of them getting back together for a high school reunion or some yeah. dumb shit like that. That's all I want. I just want to see that them 90s again. movie. Exactly. And you could have like their kids and stuff be yeah. part of it, but just not be the main focus. Exactly. Because when they're on the screen, it just it shines. And it's it's a shame. Donna's in a few episodes. Fed's in a few episodes. But Eric, Kelso and Jackie are one and done. Right. And very quick. Like Jackie's barely even in it. But yeah. Uh, that dang show. It's on Netflix. She had to get back to uh, Voice and Meg over at the Family Guys yeah. studio. Yeah. That's Tough job, tough mm -hmm. job. Uh, but yeah, it's on Netflix. Uh, I recommend it if you if you like uh, that 70s show. And I hope that 80s show comes to something. Because I was about to ask, did you ever watch I that did. 80s show with uh, Glenn Howerton? <laughs> I watched the first few, um, but it didn't like stick around long enough to really like gain any sort of following. I liked it. I thought it was perfectly fine because they weren't high school kids. They were more college age. Mm -hmm. It was more... Uh, decade appropriate for me i mean i wasn't in college in the 80s obviously right, right, i was right. a small child but uh there's more nostalgia there and that that's one problem with that 90s show it doesn't feel like the 90s except for a couple of like oh the internet uh dial-up sound oh ha 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 oh we're gonna go see uh batman forever that's a 90s movie uh, <laughs> in some of the clothes, but I don't think the the house is is so different that right. it reflects. But that makes sense. Old people don't really change with the times, but it just never really felt like the 90s. Right, right, right. So that's a shame. Oh, okay. So you want to do your book? You read a book. I did read a book. Uh, I read uh, 
short fantasy novel called Legends and Lattes. And this book took the internet by storm. It's nominated for uh, a bunch of awards this year. Um, it was it started out as a um, self-published, I think, like mm. ebook thing, and it got so popular that it was actually picked up by like a bigger um, company publishing. to like the publishing Publisher. company. Yeah, um, and it's essentially uh, it's a fantasy novel, uh, and the tagline is of uh, hi- high fantasy, low stakes, because mm. it's about uh, an orc woman who opens up a coffee shop, okay. and that's kind of the story. All right, and. Uh, it's just like her starting her business and getting a, a a staff, and it's just like this sweet, adorable little tale of just trying to like make the like this happy little coffee shop and like feed customers coffee. And like the problem is, no one's heard of coffee in this sort of <laughs> okay. you know, in right. this city that she chose. She like discovered it on one of her adventures. She was like a uh, a mercenary, uh, you know, slaying monsters in her day. And she went to this like gnome little coffee, uh, this coffee shop run by gnomes and just fell in love with the flavor of, and she's like, <laughs> I'm going to like save up money so I can open up my own business and, and sell this somewhere. Cause no one's really tapped into this. And, uh, she meets, uh, my favorite character in the book is this little, uh, like rat person kind of thing. And he is just like, the greatest baker in the world and he just makes like really tasty like cinnamon rolls and stuff and uh but there is like some stakes maybe someone from her crew comes back and is like threatening her business uh because maybe she has something from one of their adventures he wants there's a like a local gang in town who are just like you gotta pay us uh, like protection money kind mm-hmm. of stuff so it's like her having to deal with that so there is like threats to her business but it's all like i don't want to like fight anybody i don't want to like slay monsters i just want to like open up my coffee shop in peace and uh it's just like f- they do like fun little stuff of just like oh what's this thing oh this is an ice machine it's like what <laughs> an ice machine you mean you can keep ice it's like yeah the gnomes invented it like it keeps things cool so it like our products will last longer and they're like whoa that's so crazy <laughs> and it's just like real fun sort of like uh it, as someone who's been reading nothing but like these grand sweeping adventures of like people tra- traversing the globe or like slaying dragons or whatever, it's just like here's a story about making coffee, and it was real cute and adorable. It took me uh, like three days to read because um, it was I think it's like two hundred or three hundred pages, but oh. it's like it's a real quick read. Each mm-hmm. chapter is like ten pages, which is right in my fucking wheelhouse uh <laughs> that's break time reading you know? yeah. i'm just I, I breeze through it so fast uh and i could see this being a like an animated like a hour and a half animated uh film that i think would be real cute because it's not like i think there's like some curse words in it but it's not like there's next to no violence in it there's next to no cursing in it uh it's just a, a, a fun little book hmm. and uh if you want something light and breezy and uh, just makes you feel good about yourself. Uh, Legends and Lattes. It's uh, it's worth the hype. Now, she's an orc. Are there people who are like, well, I don't buy food from orcs? Or is it she's selling it in an orc village? No, no. She's selling it in a city where there's like multiple different okay. races and stuff. Living in and harmony. She is uh, like big and scary looking, but she carries herself in a way that like people aren't necessarily threatened. Like when she first came to town and started like, you know, building her business, everyone's like, what the, what's going on here? And especially it was like hard to get business when like no one knew what the product was. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she had to like offer free samples to get everyone to like come and word of mouth spreads and all this kind of stuff. Uh, So something like the King tries it and it's like, I declare this the beverage of the kingdom. (laughs) No, there is no King. Uh, Okay. uh, There's no, I think, there's no mayor of the town or anything like that. Like the big, uh, one of the the biggest uh, person in there is, in the city, I guess, would be like this crime lord, mm-hmm. but who comes to the thing. But it's not like the crime lord's like, I declare coffee uh, the best beverage in town, and everyone has to buy it, or they, or I'm gonna slit your throats. Right? <laughs> it's nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a it's a fun little novel, and uh, I highly recommend it. Cool. Well, the book I read isn't nearly as fun or cute. It's called The Hive, and it's kind of hard to recommend this book because it's part two of the second chunk of stories. It's actually kind of, it's part five. So, you know Ender's Game. I'm a big Ender's Game fan. 
Don't really love the author. He seems like a piece of shit, but I like the books. He writes really well. And most of the Ender Games books are pretty good. There's some of them that are just not as interesting because once the, the Forank War is done and it's more politics, mm-hmm. that's not really what I care about. But it, it, it's interesting enough. But uh, there's stories of like Ender taking the Hive Queen to a different planet and letting it grow there on its own. That stuff is is pretty good. It's like Speaker of the Dead and Xenocide, I think. Those two are good. Well, these first books... These are well because during Ender's game they are fighting the the Hive Queen after the Second Formic War, mm-hmm. and they're taking the the fight to the planet. Well, this is about the First Formic War, which was Earth unaware, Earth alive, and Earth on fire. And this is the Formics coming down, us never knowing they ever existed, and just fucking up Earth and just laying waste to China because they're pretty much kind of terraforming so they can live here. And they are way stronger than us. Like technologically, they just. Uh, oh, they traveled the space. <laughs> exactly. And they, cre- they created stuff that, you know, covers their. Their ships called like whole mat and it's uh, impenetrable even to nukes. And, you know, we got to figure out how do we break through that and yada, yada, yada. Well, that those were the first three books, which were the the first series that actually kind of got me into audiobooks. I listened to the the Earth Unaware before I ever read Ender's Game. I didn't even mm-hmm. know it was an Ender's Game book. Uh, but I, once I was into that and I started looking into it, that's when it like I went off and read all of them. <clears throat> well, now. We defeated the Formics the first time. So the first Formic War is done. But only a few years later, like, we kind of find out, like, they're still coming. That was just, like, a scout ship, really, to see if it w- if it could possibly be a good planet to come to. Now the fucking Armada is coming. And uh, it's bigger, and they're meaner, and they're doing really more fucked up shit than just terraforming. They're, like, kind of creating their own humans. But, like, oh. yeah, just, like taking people and examining them and and uh building their own like one this one guy sees something stuck to the wall that's pretty much just like a pair of lungs and an esophagus and it's just screaming because it's just like organs trying to live and it doesn't really have a consciousness so it's just like screaming its bloody head off uh we don't know what what's going to happen with that because they that's kind of introduced kind of late into this so the second formic war um started it, it was the swarm and then the second book is called the hive and the, the next book is not out yet so uh it's it's Wait, her he's still making books yeah oh i thought he was like dead or something now like ender's game is not an old book it came out in, like i think late 80s early 90s it's not something that came out in like i the just 30s. didn't expect him to still be like making oh, yeah. more enders content okay oh, yeah. interesting uh, i think he did write this with a guy named aaron johnson uh, not Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh, yeah, darn. I know. Uh, the Hunter. <laughs> so I, I think maybe he's getting older and, sure. and going to pass it off. Or maybe, maybe uh, Aaron Johnson worked on some of the other books too. Like maybe he may have, maybe he came to him and said, mm. Hey, I got a good idea for this. And he said, okay, I'll put my name. We call on it, it beginner's you. game. <laughs> hey. Classic jokes. Anyway, um, but yeah, this takes place like 100, 200 years before Ender's Game. So there, it's good. Uh, the, the audiobook versions are, are really good because they do have a larger cast. See what, what Mazer Rackham was up to. You know, classic character, uh, Maori warrior played by Gen- Ben Kingsley, Mazer Rackham. Uh, now, would you say that, uh, you know, there's the there's the Ender's Game's books and then there you, this is the, the first... Uh, this is Tharmic War? Formic. Formic War, thank yeah, you. This is the, the, yeah, the second Formic War. Yeah, so it's like, here's this story, and then it's like, oh, well, now I'm doing a prequel trilogy. Would you say that reading the prequel trilogy, is, read that first, and then lead into Ender's Game, or no. start with Ender's Game, I'd and say, then jump back into the prequels? Yeah, I'd say read them in the order that they were released. Okay. Yeah. Um, in a lot of the the ones, the, the Ender's Game, and then there's one that's being told from Bean. I don't know if you remember the character yeah, Bean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during his same time, I like. I actually like that. I only book. read the first book, but yeah, yeah. I, I like the one about Bean more than Ender's actually, Game. I might have read the Bean one too. Yeah, what was it? that? Was called uh, Ender. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, Ender's Game and Ender it doesn't matter. But yeah, it doesn't I may matter. have read the second one, but it was like twenty years ago. But but the the these prequels are good. They stand al- alone. 
Uh, because in, especially in Ender's Game, it's like the Formics are bad and they're out there and going to get us, but they don't. That's not the main focus. It's about the kids and and learning and how to become leaders. This is a lot more of what they are as a species and learning of just them in general mm-hmm. and kind of the bureaucracy of of politics that go into it. And just only now in this one, they start talking about like a a grab camp for kids to be part of the wartime effort. And uh, so many generals are like, what the fuck is this? You can't have kids in war. And like, well, we got to train them. They got to be the next generation and you know, yada, yada, yada. So uh, they're good companion pieces, but you don't have to read any of the other ones. And I, and I have the first three on audiobook. If you want to borrow one, at least the first one earth unaware, just to see if you're interested in it, I'll let you borrow it. Okay, cool. Um, we can cut this part, but it's so. Uh, this is part of the simulation, or, and it's so <laughs> weird that you brought up, you know, Ender's Game because I today watched a clip from Ender's Game on really? YouTube of uh, the the movie from uh, mm-hmm. after he's defeated the uh, you know blown up the planet, and then he's just like, "You won, kid." It's like, "What do you mean I won?" It's like, yeah. "You won the war," yeah. and like watch that whole scene. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, this scene is pretty good yeah, from a movie that was just like kind of mediocre." Yeah, that didn't do very well. Uh, it's a pretty good adaptation i think yeah, I, yeah. it gets shit on a lot i love ender's game the movie um yeah, it's yeah. sad because he just thinks he won a game oh i beat you mazer in your stupid game and yada yada and it's like no you just exterminated a whole race of creatures blew like, up a oh. planet of billions yeah oh fuck yeah, yeah. And, and that leads to good books like the speaker for the dead and, and xenocide is just him kind of grappling with that and f- being so far flung. I think he's on a planet. It's It's been a while since I read it, but it's like this planet has like there's one bug that feeds one bird that feeds one fish that feeds one sort of like land animal. And that's it. It's like th- if there's a fish in the water, there's only one type. If there's a bug in the grass, there's only one type. It's like a s- small ecosystem and everything has its purpose. Mm-hmm. And there's other like there's things called like the paquitos. And they're like the only other sentient thing in the universe we found that are not the Formix or us. And their life cycle is so bizarre. But he's such a good writer of of talking about things that would hard be hard to even imagine so uh, they're they're really interesting the avatar movies we never got (laughs) yeah i mean i like that concept though of just like one thing on land, one thing on water one thing in the air it's just like just a perfect cycle of Mm -hmm. you know but then if one thing dies then everything yeah and that's like there's humans that are living on the planet and like some of them don't want the hive queen there because She's just going to do the same thing. She's going to start building ships and then go and conquer other planets. And other people are like, she's going to screw up the ecosystem and and like we should wipe her out again. Like, no, she's a living thing. She's a sentient thing. It's, it's really good. Once again, we can cut of this. Uh, but, uh, in the first Mass Effect game, I mm-hmm. think, there's a part where you like do a side mission or it's part of the main quest or whatever, where you like fight these monsters or whatever because i guess there was like some race that they like humans got in a war with or like the galaxy got in a war with and they were called like the we'll just call them the reavers or something i don't really okay. remember what the name was but they just like they were just like this huge army that were like super scary and like killed a ton of people and we thought we like wiped them out and then it was just like there was like a mother left or whatever mm-hmm. in like this tube and she's like talking to you and it's just like some kind of scary looking monster but just like please like release me <laughs> like i don't want to conquer anything if you let me go i just want to like raise my children in peace i promise i won't do anything and so i'm just like do i let this thing fucking live or do yeah. I? it's like i'm not doing it justice but the way it's presented it's just like it made it seem more like it's not just some mindless killing machine mm-hmm. that would like and it, just, and it made like a good argument of like why you should let it live it's like oh if i do kill this thing like i'd be responsible for like the erratic the uh, eradication. eradication of an, of a species and stuff. And so, like, I let it go and it hasn't, like, come back to okay, bite me okay. or whatever. <laughs> but I'm wondering if, like, in game two or three, it comes back and, like, yeah, man, you should let yeah, me go. Should... And, uh... <laughs> it, yeah, it has its little, like, tentacle hands behind its back with its fingers crossed. Like, <laughs> yeah. I promise I won't do anything. Again. Yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, what I would do in that situation. Yeah. I mean, me, currently, if I saw an alien, I'd probably be like, no, fucking kill that thing. <laughs> but, like, if I had, like, a concept of, like, oh, I made friends with a ton of aliens, and, yeah. like, who am I to decide? Yeah, if it's you're like, living in space and you're interacting with other aliens, it's a bit harder. Yeah. You're the only person that comes across this thing, and someone's like, it's going to eradicate Earth? Yeah, you're going to fucking kill yeah, yeah. it. Shotgun that thing. <laughs> but anyway, just a interesting concept of, <laughs> you know, the power of 
species evisceration. Yeah. yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Steve, tell me about The Pale Blue Eye. The Pale Blue Eye on Netflix starring Christian Bale, directed by Scott Cooper. Uh, Scott Cooper directed Crazy Heart with Jeff Bridges, Out of the Furnace, also with Christian Bale. Host, uh, Hostiles um, with Christian Bale. I didn't see that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and Antlers. So this is the of the five movies or five major movies he's released. I think that was all of them. Uh, I've seen four of them. I did not see Hostiles. Okay. Um, and I... Oh, wait, no. I didn't see Crazy Heart either. Anyway, <laughs> uh, all of his movies I've enjoyed, but never really felt like they were, like, great. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. this one might be my favorite. Hmm. Um, so for those who don't know, it's essentially um, Christian Bale. It's set in the 1800s, and Christian Bale has to solve a, a, a murder um, at West Point Academy. Um and he teams up with Edgar Allan Poe uh, to find out who is like cutting the hearts out of people. Um, and I, it's sh- shot pretty well. It's two hours and I was never bored. Um, uh, there's some cool imagery in it, um, but it's not as creepy as I think it mm. should be. Um, the uh, actors, Harry Melling, who plays Edgar Allan Poe, I think is great. I was like, Give me this. Like, I, I liked them teamed up together. I think mm-hmm. they were a fun duo because um, his Edgar Allan Poe was kind of like this sweet, slight uh, outcast who's just like really good with words against all these like, you know, military jockey types uh-huh. or whatever. Like, clearly he's different from everybody else. Um, and obviously he's troubled with his uh, past. And Edgar Allan Poe actually did go to. Uh, like West Point Academy, and but I mean, he wasn't solving crimes with you know, a detective <laughs> or anything like that. This is a made up story based on you know, tr- factual things. Is, is Christian Bale's character a real person? No, but uh, but what this movie does is make a lot of references to Poe's work, so it's kind of like uh a love letter to Edgar Allan Poe without it actually being about Edgar Allan Poe. Hmm. Like the main character's name is Landor and I looked it up and um, Edgar Allan Poe's like last short story that he ever wrote was called Landor's Cottage hmm. um, and Landor lives in a college. Uh, a cottage. In a cottage that you see in this movie. Huh. Now, uh, hey, what are you, me? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so the mystery was interesting enough and uh, I I bought into some of the ideas and uh, I I had a pretty good time. And, but then what I saw most people complaining about is I agree kind of the biggest issue with this movie. Like this movie could have been an hour and 40 minutes and I think it would have like maybe would have ended kind of like how you expected it would have be. But it would have just been a tight, solid movie with, like, no real issues. But then, let's just say the crime is solved, and then there's an extra 25 minutes left of the movie. And then you're like... Is it wrap-up, or is it, ah, the crime is solved, and then, but we got it all wrong, and the real killer is, uh, you know, coming after us? Uh, Well, I don't like saying that there's a twist and stuff because then you're just like oh well now I'm just waiting for the twist and it kind of like takes you out of it but what I'll say is there's just more to it um and the more to it is fine uh I don't think it didn't ruin the movie for me uh, it, it just was one of those things like did, did that really need to be added on I think the movie kind of was good enough on its own so then it's just like well now it's here's a little bit of wrap up and here's some this other thing and it's just kind of like oh Okay. <laughs> and, it, and it's a movie that I think you would enjoy at first, but then you would get bored. And then by the end, you'd be like, that ending was dumb. I hated that. Okay. Um, I think it would just kind of be one of those movies that just like, you'd feel like, what? why did I bother? Okay. You know, it's, it's what I thought it was going to be. But uh, if you like sort of gothic kind of uh mystery stories, like it's, it's definitely a solid entry into that genre. <laughs> and like I said, I think, Bale's pretty solid. I mean, he's not like a fantastic performance, but he's just solid in it. Um, but Harry Melling as Edgar Allan Poe is a lot of fun. And uh, I was just like, give me that Edgar Allan Poe movie. like, Or like, give me a TV show where Edgar Allan Poe is like solving horror mysteries. Like, that's fucking cool. Like, give me and just like base all those uh, mysteries on like books that, he, uh, that mm-hmm. he'll like write in the future. Like, I think that could be like a fun, like sort mm-hmm. of uh, 
different take on uh, Edgar Allan Poe's history. Like, he wasn't actually out there solving crimes. He was sure. just some depressed emo boy who was mm-hmm. writing poetry. Yeah, drinking himself um, to death. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think you could do some fun stuff with that. Well, did that you ever of. see The Raven? I did see The Raven. So isn't that kind of what you're asking for? I mean, I guess it's backwards. He is solving mysteries based on his books, so he had already written them. Yeah. You wanted a little backwards. Yeah, but... this is like early Edgar Allan Poe. That's Edgar Allan Poe literally right before he dies. Yeah. Uh, and I don't remember that movie it's all that much. Movie. Yeah, I remember it being bad. It's bad. Uh, it could be like interesting and yeah. smart, but it's not. It wants to be like a, a PG-13 horror movie for I teens. may have seen that movie with you. No, I didn't see it until like two years okay. ago. Oh, really? I mean, I saw it in theaters, and it doesn't seem like the kind of movie that I would go to see unless someone's just like, hey, we're seeing The Raven today. Yeah, I, I wanted to because I do like Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, he has a connection to my childhood that I'm not going to get into. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but were you molested by a raven, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> by a big melon headed man. Uh I, it was just something that, like, I know that's going to be bad. And I, you know me, I love bad movies, but I knew this wasn't even going to be good, bad. And I. The Raven. Yeah, The Raven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I watched it a few years ago, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm right. It's so obvious, like, who the killer is. It's it's so, so basic. And I'm not a big John Cusack fan. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. That's it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I would recommend it if you. The. I was going to say if the horror genre is for you, but it's not really scary. So it's yeah. not really a horror movie. If you like uh, is it mystery. Is like a horror movie for moms? Yeah. There's, it's not really jump scary or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um, it's just more of a, you know, creepy vibe. It's like they like NCIS, but they want to NCIS. Yeah. If you like, like, if you like serial killers and mysteries, uh, thrillers, check it out. Um, but if you're not in that, don't bother. Cause it's, it's not for you. <laughs> All right, I have a movie. It's a pretty bad movie. Well, it's not good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of like roll through the story, and I want you to t- figure it out. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Because okay. I called it so early. So there's a family. They're driving in a car. It's mom, dad, brother, sister, and mm-hmm. sister's boyfriend, and they're going to mom's or they're going to grandma's house for Christmas. Okay. So. They are on this back road and they're just like, dad, where are we going? Like, well, I decided to take a shortcut. I was getting bored of the freeway and I wanted to to go a different way. Classic dad move. Totally dad. Uh, And they're driving along and everyone's falling asleep. Everyone's asleep in the car and dad's nodding off. And he uh, he nods off pretty hard. Swerves into another road. There's a car there. They swerve off the side of the road and they stop and they're just like, oh my God, that was close. And they see a woman carrying a baby in the road. And they're like, oh, this is kind of weird. Ma'am, do you need help? And she refuses to say anything. They're like, well, let's, we passed a, a shack not too far back. There's probably a phone in it. Let's, let's go take her there. Hey, daughter, why don't you get out of the car and walk back the way we're going so we can put this this speed, this woman that's not talking in the car? And so, yeah. And, what? And she's fine with it. Yeah. It's like to make room for this woman, they kick the daughter out. Not not the son, not the boyfriend. I mean, the boyfriend does offer like, hey, I'll go with you. And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. I need the fresh air by myself. So they go back to the cabin. The phone doesn't work or whatever. And the woman is sitting with the, the boyfriend. And she makes him hold the baby. And he's like, oh, it's so cold. And she's like, because it's dead. And they, the, he, you know, they hear a scream. The family who was like all investigating either the shack or the brother who's like this little annoying shit. that was like constantly making gay jokes to the boyfriend. It's like he was in love with his sister and super jealous of the boyfriend. It's really obnoxious. <laughs> he goes off to the, the forest to go jack off to a Playboy centerfold he keeps in his back pocket. 
Really weird. But uh, they come back to the car. He's gone. The woman's gone. And this black Cadillac, or no, it's not a black Cadillac. It's like a black hearse. Uh An old style, you know, with like a big dome. It drives by. And the boyfriend's in the back. And they're like, no. So they get in the car and they chase after it. And they come across his remains. And they're all just like chopped up. They don't really show up, but they talk about it. They take a cell phone. It's not working. I mean, the mom kind of gets it to work. And it's just like... I'm going to kill you. You know, some creepy voice on the other end. Wait, one more time. What was it like? I'm going to kill you. (laughs) So they're like, oh, what's going on? And of course, they they run into the daughter again. And they're like, oh, we got to get out of here. So they get back in the car and they drive off again. And then they get a flat tire. So they have to, to change the flat. They pull over. The sun goes off to probably jack off again. And um, <laughs> it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> and then there's like a woman there. The the I think it's the same woman. And he's just like, oh, what are you doing? And she starts making out with him. So he's kind of like, all right, cool. And then you hear a scream and the, the family comes and runs and finds his remains. And or no, they they. Yeah. No. What did they do? No. they Oh, they couldn't find him. And then the car goes by again. And he's in the back going, help! And they then they eventually find his remains. And gotcha. so the mom has now gone crazy. She she can't, can't cope with it. And she's eating weird food and acting all goofy. And they're driving down the road. And she jumps out of the car going like 60 miles an hour. And uh, so now she's dead. And they pass a sign, and it's like a sign for Marlowe. Let's just call it Marlowe. They're like, oh, well, the town of Marlowe must be ahead, so we'll keep going. And they're driving, and they're driving. They just can't seem to get out of this backwoods. Mm-hmm. And then they uh, uh, they eventually, they pass that cabin again. How could that be? They passed that hours ago. Are they going in circles? Of course they can't go in circles. We haven't gone off this road. It was all a dream. No. Okay. But think along those lines. Okay. So then, uh, oh shit, what happens next? Um, Then dad dies somehow. Don't remember. Doesn't matter. It would, well, they fell asleep. The dad, you know, didn't miss the truck. Everyone died except for one person who's just imagining this whole thing. Uh, that's, that's my or no, they all die, and this is like the purgatory hell thing that they're in. They How much you finish? They all died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all got into it because so then it's just the daughter is left, and so she's um, walking. Sorry, and, how did the dad die? I can't remember. Okay, some, some stupid way. Sure. Um, and. So, yeah, she's walking and the hearse passes her again and she's just like, oh, damn you. And then you see the hearse is the car that they swerved to mm. not hit. And, uh, you know, they they all died except the, the daughter. She was she's in a coma and she mm. was flung from the car. And so, yes, she's been like so there was all one. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And the town of harlow or whatever it was dr harlow is the one that's uh taking care of her Uh, and then uh the hearse shows up at the hospital and the driver like is talking to the doctor because she has a flat like hey baby can i give you a ride home and then they drive off oh yeah this movie's called dead end uh it was made in like 2003 it's shit it had a pretty good like imdb score compared to other things and the reviews are all like this is a good little horror film it's a so it's like a, 5.3 no it was like a 6.7 really yeah huh. and this is a uh tales from the crypt story that could have been told in an hour all the characters are really really obnoxious and you want them all to die so um you know it's not heartbreaking when it happens uh like the mom is uh you know from um was it Sinister and all the horror movies when you need a creepy old lady? She was the medium. Sure. It, it's her. Insidious, not Sinister. Oh, okay. Insidious, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, the daughter was... Oh, did you watch Friends? You watched some Friends. You yeah. know when Ross was dating like one of his students? I remember that plot. And her I dad remember. was Bruce Willis. Sound like there was an owl in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm not going to remember yeah, well, what she that, looks like. That but, okay. daughter, but yeah, okay. it's not important. But yeah, we were just needing the movie to watch. And this was on my list because I keep a list in uh, IMDb of like things I have seen and things I need to see. And so whenever I'm bored and I need something, I just go through that list and see what's playing. And it was on there. And I really would like to know how it got on there. Did someone from some YouTube video recommend it and said, oh, this is such a good movie? Or did I read the synopsis and think, wow, that sounds really good? I don't know how it got on there, but it did. And we watched it and it's pretty bad. But yeah, you got it. I, I like I had it. It was like 15 minutes. As soon as they did the fall asleep swerve and everything, yeah. I turned to my it's, roommate. It's the classic and just like, movie they're trope. Dead. They're, yeah. This is purgatory or something. They're they're already dead. So yeah, uh, don't watch Dead End. So we have our two main topics. Yeah, I think let's start with Plane. Oh okay. Well, I don't know. What, what do you think we should start with Missing? I know Plane is the most fresh for us. We just got out of the theater not too long ago, but I don't know if there's a, a whole lot to say about Plane. We start with Plane. Whatever. Okay, let's start with Plane. This movie's fine. <laughs> this this movie was all right. I I wasn't upset that I saw it, um, but I could have skipped it. Um, I think it gets better towards the end once people start dying. Uh, that's when the fun happens. But this isn't anything special. It felt like it was missing something. Like there was an act that mm-hmm. we got left out. Like something with Mike Coulter. Something that they needed to do. Like if if uh, Jared Butler needed to save him because he got kidnapped. You know, just something yeah, something a little more. If act one is the plane crash and act three is like them escaping. Act two would have been like them bonding Mm -hmm. And, like, understanding, like, oh, whatever Michael Coulter did was, like, a setup or not true. we don't ever really... We never really get into that backstory. It's just, like, it would have been, like, I don't trust you, and I'm not who I... Or I'm not who you think I am. Figure out who they are, bonding, and then go... And it's, like, maybe Michael Coulter is, like, teaching him how to, like, use a gun and, like, be okay with killing. And then Gerard Butler's teaching and, like figuring out stuff about Michael Coulter. Uh, uh, that like doesn't really happen. It's just yeah. kind of like, we crash, here's a problem, we kill some guys, the and we end. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a part where they have two, they kill a guy and they take the other one hostage to get information. And while Gerard Butler, um, okay, I got to stop. I've actually heard, it. it's actually Jared Butler. And we as a, a society have all decided that it's Gerard Butler and it's not. And he's actually come out multiple times saying it's just Jared Butler and we refuse to change uh, how we say it. So his name is Jared Butler. So Gerard Butler. Uh... <laughs> William Defoe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. If you say Gerard, I just I thought I'd get it out there. Mr. Butler. <laughs> no, I'm going to call him Jerry B. Yeah, uh, Jerry, yeah B. Jerry. Jerry B. Uh, uh, so. There, there's a part where they have like this hostage and he's in the plane and Mike Coulter goes and takes him. You hear a gunshot and he comes back out without the guy in a lot of movies where the good hero guy would say, how could you do that, man? That was a human. You have no right to take their life and yada, yada, yada. Hey, man, we got to do what we got to do. They want to kill us. It's either us or them. There was none of that. He was just kind of looked like, Ooh. I guess that had to happen. Yeah. And he just <laughs> moved on with that. And, yeah. uh, and, and it's kind of nice, but to, to add a little more, it seems like they needed a couple of those scenes. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to say I'm surprising myself and saying I kind of dug this movie. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not, not it's, bad. It's not good. I recognize it's not a good movie. Uh, it's not a bad movie. But yeah. it's not bad. It, it, it doesn't do anything wrong or poorly. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. Uh, so... Let's just start off with, uh, so the the main story is Gerard Butler is or Jerry B. Yeah. He he's a pilot, um, and Mike Coulter, aka Luke Cage, um, <laughs> is a criminal who gets put on his plane last minute, and he's been on the run for ten years, and they finally caught him and uh, for murder, um, and they don't really get into that story. It's just like you just it's just murder, <laughs> uh, and. Their plane gets struck by lightning. It goes down in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And they say the island a, a bunch of times, and I cannot remember. Yeah, it. We'll just call it the Philippines. Yeah. And uh, 
Jerry B and Mike Coulter have to team up to kill the bad guys to get the passengers who were taken hostage. Because yeah. um, these are assholes who like to just take people and ransom them, yeah. ransom them for money. Yep. We see their little like snuff snuff cave, which was pretty pretty fucked up. Yeah. I, I was hoping well, we'll get into it. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's just jump to the plane crash sequence. I mean, there's some shoddy special effects, but not like horrendous special effects in terms no. of like the plane. Actually. There's two scenes in this movie that I thought really worked for me. And this is one of them. I thought the plane going down, like, actually, I don't know what it was. actually felt tense. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just going to credit Jerry B for this movie. Because throughout this entire movie that he could have phoned it in, I thought Jerry B was going 110%. Yeah, he was I thought, really, he, was, I thought he was great He was this. giving it his all. Yeah, like, he wasn't phoning it in. He's been in a ton of action movies. He knows this movie's not going to make a ton of money. This is... This seems like it would just be... A, it's one of those movies that, like, Bruce Willis would be doing now. Yep. Uh, yeah. But th this is a instead uh, of like, uh, Liam Neeson movie. Yeah, but instead of Bruce Willis going, like, I don't give a shit about this, Gerard Butler's like, no, man. You hired me for a job. Yeah. I'm going to fucking I mean, kick that. ass in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And, if you're going to uh, make fun of this movie, it's not because of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I give full credit, because I thought he was... The whole uh, crash sequence was pretty, uh, pretty tense and mm -hmm. pretty well done. The only problem I have with it is the camera work and editing in it was horrendous. Yeah, there were some this weird is, cuts. This is one of my favorite scenes and also the probably the worst uh, filmed part of the movie because mm -hmm. the entire five-minute sequence is just shaky cam. It's, it's just like they're just holding a camera in their hands mm -hmm. and like shaking it back and forth, which is fine. It's a classic movie-making technique. Sure. But uh, it just looked cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought the sequence itself was like pretty well done. They'd be flying and like, oh, wait, I think that's land over there. Turn left. And then the next shot would be them like already over land. And yeah. like, oh, whoa. That was, it's like I know you're trying to like keep the pace up. But it needed a few more seconds of approach to the land. It, yeah. it some of it just kind of happened real quick. The the effects that I thought were the worst looking, they were exterior shots of the plane. The plane itself looked fine, but the camera would like swing from one side of the plane to the other, and mm. it made it look like the plane was like twisting and turning out yeah. of the sky. But it's just the camera whipping around, and that did it was, not look yeah. right. I I think that seemed like one of those kind of things. Like oh, it'll look. If we move it fast enough, it'll look like the plane's like really like twisting in a crazy yeah. in a crazy way, and that's how you know it's dangerous. But it just looked unnatural, yeah. and it was weird. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to take a quick moment. This is just a story thing that I just I don't know if it's accurate to real life or whatever. Uh, but so they have to like before they take off, they're like, "Hey, there's a storm up ahead. Can we go around it?" And the guy's like, "No, it'll take us an extra hour to get to where we're going." And that's eighteen thousand dollars in fuel. Yeah. So are you telling me that, and every hour a plane is in the air is eighteen thousand dollars? Because it's, that doesn't seem financially feasible I for anyone. And if it was a packed plane, sure. There's fourteen, 14. people. Yeah. So if they all spent, let's say, five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Seven hundred. Seven thousand dollars. Yeah. And so, and let's say this was a, and it was like from uh, China to Hawaii. To Hawaii. Yeah. So I'm gonna say that's a minimum ten hour flight. I have I, no idea. I don't know. You no, know let's even say it's a five hour flight. Sure. We're talking eighteen thousand dollars times five is ninety grand. Mm -hmm. And you, it, you guys made seven grand. Uh -huh. And we're not even talking about like paying the crew uh -huh. and all that stuff. That, that yeah. doesn't, I don't know. I don't know how that works. That <laughs> and that could just be a thing. Like, well, yeah, we could. We didn't have to put eighteen thousand. Actually, I have no idea. It's like it doesn't, yeah, all of our other flights were packed, so we made all that money, so we can burn this cash because we make enough money to pay for these flights for fourteen people. But it just it, it just seems absurd to me that eighteen thousand dollars an hour in fuel that that just. I don't. Yeah, that, that can't be right. Can yeah, it? It, we must be missing a piece of information that makes this make sense. And it's like we're we're, we're only hearing parts of it. Yeah. But I thought I heard that pretty clearly as well. But and and I've seen stories of like I was the only one on this flight. Like they canceled it, rebooked everyone with someone else except me. Like they forgot me. I showed up at the gate. They were able to approve this flight last minute, and I was the only one on the on the flight. Like, okay. 
how many thousands of dollars of fuel are you using to get one person? And I've even heard of flights where they'll fly empty because there's a fine if you don't take off regardless of who's on the plane. So they'll just fly to their destination even though the plane's empty. Well, and that's super wasteful and, and it pollutes the earth and everything. But like, how can that be profitable? I don't get it. Yeah. I, Why do we keep bailing out the air, airlines? Morons. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that was just a story point where it's like, I, I don't have the science to back up yeah. if it's absurd, but it just sounds absurd. Um, but anyway, so plane crashes. That was fun. Yeah. Um, Jerry B and, and Mikey C. Uh, decide to team up and go into the jungle. Well, just, Gerard Butler, or Jerry B, yeah. uh, s- s- like volunteers him to, to come with him. And he's just kind of like, all right, all right, cool. cool. Uh, <laughs> Gets the handcuffs on. And right. this is my second favorite part of the movie. I not well. This is my favorite part of the movie, but the other scene I really, really liked. So uh, Jerry B is making a call. He First, hot wires a phone. He hot wires a phone <laughs> in the middle of the jungle to call the airline. The airline doesn't believe who he is, and then he calls his yeah, daughter. A bunch of pricks. That person better have been fired. You're like, uh, we've been getting crank calls all the time. Oh, you don't know this number? Well, then you must be fake. Like. I, There's got to be some sort of protocol to would, like, and maybe she was them. following it, Who knows? and maybe he should know his his badge number or whatever. But it just, I I can't see someone who's acting the way he is be a fake prank call. Like this person's really selling this prank call, right, right, right. But anyhow, anyway, uh, that's movie stuff. Yeah. Uh, so a guy comes out of nowhere and starts fighting him, and then we get this like kind of long one take fight sequence and it's not flashy Mm -mm. it's just kind of two dudes grappling each other like they kind of throw each other over a desk uh and they're kind of like leaning on their faces trying to like kind of choke each other out or like push each other away and uh i love this acting sequence i thought it was great yeah uh it was only like a minute and a half two minutes tops uh but it just felt like really realistic and like close combat, a guy pulls out a knife, only gets like three swings at him before he kind of like grapples him again, and yeah. is able to sort of just like choke him out, and then like as he's passed out, break his neck. Mm-hmm. It, it was, was awesome. It was no Winter it. Soldier knife fight, you know, yeah. that's super choreographed. This was just down and dirty. Like so many of, especially these kind of like '90s style, '80s style action movies, where it's just like, oh, we could go heavy on guns, we could do these big dramatic fight sequence where like dudes are getting stabbed and thrown out of like windows and landing mm-hmm. on the cars and then rolling off and it's like and they got rebar fu- sticking out of them but they're still fighting yeah they, or then they just like singe up their wounds and they're back <laughs> at it again like nothing this was it had none of that it was yeah. just like i felt that and it looked like and i think gerard but uh, jerry b mm. was actually doing all this oh, stuff yeah. himself it didn't look like a stunt guy Mm-mm. uh this sequence was great I, mm-hmm. I i love this part um you know what my favorite part was what part? when a guy took a sledgehammer to the bottom jaw oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i i wanted more of that i knew this movie was going to be a little bloody and and when he smashed him in the face with a sledgehammer and like, oh, we're gonna get some crazy deaths. We're gonna get someone sucked into an engine. You know, there's. I thought that's how the end. The, but the we'll get to guy. that. Yeah, I, I was hoping there would be a bit more than just shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. But even when we got some of the shooting, we're getting this like crazy sniper rifle that's just blowing dudes away. <laughs> it was amazing. I you sat up as soon as that first guy like exploded. <laughs> you like put you were uh, you uh, lifted up your reclining seat and it's like, oh, now I'm invested. <laughs> Yeah, I I audibly went, holy shit, in this movie. I think like twice. Uh, yeah, so Mike Coulter like, is, uh, let's say he was a uh, foreign legion or something like that. He was he was in some <laughs> military group or whatever. And so that's why he's like good at killing people. Um, and it's interesting because I think at the beginning, did, Gerard, did Jerry B, I keep doing that. Did Jerry B say... Uh, Should have never mentioned it. I know. He... Uh, he said he like did military stuff, right? He, and it was the fastest way to get into. Yeah, but he just flew like cargo planes. Yeah, yeah, but he wasn't like combat no. trained or anything. No. Yeah, yeah. So he was just mostly kind of just a normal dude. He's just a dude, yeah. And I think he only kills that one guy in the fist fight. Uh, uh, he chokes out the guy. They both sneak up behind two, and yeah, Mike but he Coulter, doesn't kill him. Uh, Mike but Coulter, like, he would he would have choked him out if Mike Coulter wasn't there to stab him in the gut. I think. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, 
he assisted. We'll give he, him a 1.5. Yeah, we'll give him a 1.5. Uh, but Mike Coulter was doing all the most of the killing in this movie. And uh, I think Mike Coulter's a star. I like to see him in more stuff. Yeah. I thought he was badass in this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he does as a character. It wasn't much yeah. there. And like, it wasn't a lot for him to do acting wise. Uh I just think his vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Something would... about him in a tank top and a big old sledgehammer. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll see more of that. Yeah, give me that movie. <laughs> uh, and I even turned to you during the movie. I was like, I think my culture could play Steel. Yeah. I just remember yeah. Shaq having a sledgehammer mm-hmm. in that movie, even though Steel's a horrendous movie. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he... I, I If you told me he didn't have a good time on this film, I would believe it because yeah. he just was coated in sweat the entire mm-hmm. time. And just very neutral face. Yeah, You didn't see a screaming and getting angry at people is just kind of like yep that's what which we i think do. like that's where you have that middle part not that this movie necessarily needs to be longer uh but uh, you maybe you cut out some of the like war room stuff at the yeah airplane headquarters or whatever i think you could have cut all that i don't think we needed commandos dropping in to save the day it should have been the jerry b and mikey c show of they have to defend it. And yeah, it doesn't make sense for them to take out a whole army. Yeah. But you you reduce the amount of people uh, on that island for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, for whoever they are. And yeah, you cut out all the war room stuff. You could have them going like, we're on our way, but it's going to be, a, you know, 24 hours before yeah, we yeah. can get to you. So there's this ticking clock element. That's where I thought this movie was going to go. I thought they were going to be like, we're, we're sending commandos, they're on their way, and that was going to be like the red herring. It's like they actually either, A, take them all out, or they're fighting and there's only a few guys left and they're like, oh shit, we're about to die because they get and surrounded. Then, and then the commandos like, sure. come down, finish off those guys. And I'm like, you did it, kid. We're, we made it. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going home. Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, the commandos showed up, they helped, and uh, they all made it up. Yeah. I mean, uh, one guy got shot, but yeah. I, I assume he had survived. Uh, but yeah, I, I wish that they both did a little bit more. But yeah, Sledgehammer was pretty sweet. Yeah. So um, when they, before Jerry B kill, or actually after he kills someone, they find like a camera set up mm-hmm. where they have shown, it was like missionaries had come to the island and they were kidnapped. And if X amount of money isn't prepared in 24 hours, they're going to kill all of us. I think we needed a little bit of that with our passengers. Uh-huh. Uh, we only two of our passengers die. Well, four die. Well, oh, yeah. A stewardess, the cop who's uh, who's escorting Mike Coulter. Yeah, they die in the plane crash sequence because yeah. they got out of Because they had to get his phone. And, America's uh, obsessed with their phones. Yeah. Even in a plane crash, he couldn't have put it in airplane so, mode. Both their necks essentially snapped yeah. and died. Uh, and then and, two assholes who, you know, are snotty Karens, uh, they get shot because they try to run away. Well... <laughs> I, n- I wouldn't necessarily call them Karens. They but- walked into the plane like, ooh, they should really tell you how old these planes are when you buy your ticket. That's a Karen. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I forgot about that part. Um, but yeah, the one got shot and the other wasn't really being Karen. That's he was just true. like, I'm upset my wife just yeah. was murdered in and front of me. Cut his- <laughs> and then they cut it out. <laughs> but I think like they could have used that that room of making that plea you know like the 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 war room people are like we don't know where they went Uh they disappeared but then they say well we're from this airline and they send the war room people this video we have your captain we have your crew we will start killing them and have it be more of a hostage negotiation and then then you can start killing off some of these crew members because they they even set up one of one guy as like the ultimate asshole to, that you're going to cheer when he dies and they don't even kill him. He gets shot in the shoulder and uh and that's it. So the in a, in a normal movie that I, that I would imagine he would be the first one to go like, "How dare you try to ransom me? I'm worth so much money and blah blah blah." I'm like, "Oh, you're worth some money? Okay, you're going to be first." And then he would be crying and then they'd cut his head off on on camera. If we had a little more of that and if we lost a few of our more of our passengers, and then we cut out the war room stuff. This could have been, you know, tighter and more interesting. Or even if it wasn't so much like, oh, he's such an asshole. He's going to be the first to die. It's like, oh, well, we need three guys. Hey, asshole guy. Or it's like, we don't want to invite you. But he's just like, no, no, no. You guys aren't going anywhere without me. I got investments in on this airline. Yeah. Now you're going to, someone's giving me my refund. So he mm-hmm. comes along and then, you know, you're thinking like he's going to get them killed. But he actually like, he becomes helpful. He learns 
you know, maybe he has a heroic death or maybe he makes it out because he changes his uh, his ways. Okay. And so like that's that's sure. a character who changes through the course of the movie. But it's just like I'm kind of a dickhead for no reason. And then at the end of the movie, I'm alive. Yeah. Like the, he doesn't change as a person. He doesn't get he doesn't die be, because he's an asshole. He's just nope. I'm an asshole who just happens to live as well. Mm-hmm. And, and then it's just a weird choice to even like include him at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. And and there was even like a guy that looked like he was a, a secret MMA fighter or something. I was waiting for some some sort of reveal on that guy. Are you talking about the uh, just, Jason Statham yeah, type? Yeah. yeah, he just he looked like like, uh, like he worked in UFC. You know, he 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 seemed like he was going to either be a bad guy himself, a secret bad guy somehow, or he would have these crazy skills. But like I don't know, he was kind of worthless as well. Well, you know, UFC can only take you so far against guys with guns. That's true. So That's true. You can you can't arm bar an a army gun. of guys with guns. <laughs> but yeah, so you would you would uh, use that sort of hostage situation, and you think, oh, they're going to kill the asshole guy, and it's okay that they kill him because we got to kill someone, and it might as well be him. But then you kill one of the like the young pretty girls, and mm-hmm. you're, oh shit, things are real. Yeah, but I mean. Com- we can complain about that kind of stuff, yeah. but at but, the same time, this movie knew what it was. It's yeah. like, we're not going to, we're not worried about characters. We just want to make a fun action movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the most part, I think they succeeded. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you could really pick this movie apart, but I just kind of had a good time. Yeah. And it was under two hours. Yeah. Uh, Jerry B is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I want to see him in, in more stuff. Uh, but then again, like, I don't know if he'd be, good in other stuff see you could say that but i think he has at least one movie every year he's always in stuff i mean stuff that people see okay yeah like, <laughs> hey, there see... was a there was a period where jerry b was like leading movies oh yeah i mean he still is but he's leading movies like plain yeah uh it's just i guess he ran his course or in i don't geo know Cor- geostorm yeah. Geostorm. <laughs> uh yeah i didn't see geostorm uh, uh and i'm not gonna but uh yeah, I, I would see Plane 2. Yeah, but I don't want to see more Jerry Butler. His story's done. Because at the end, Mike Coulter finds a bag of money oh, yeah, that yeah. the mercenaries had and doesn't get on the plane when they decide to take off and just runs into the jungle. So if you were to continue anyone's story, it should be him because, oh, Jerry Butler's on another plane and it crashes yeah, again. I, you're, I, you're done with that. In, in the sequel, it's Mike Coulter, but at the end, he's just like, he's he's somewhere. He's like, I need to get out of here. Oh, I need to make a call. And you don't really see him make a call, but instead of like, there'll be like a small passenger plane or something, not passenger plane, like a one of those planes that you see in like Indiana Jones or something. Yeah, yeah. Only fits it's like only two, four people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is like Mike Coulter's shooting a bunch of guys. And then he's just like run through the jungle. It's like, start the plane. <laughs> Start the plane, and it's like, who's that? And it's like, you should just see Jerry Butler in the distance, and, boop, and they just fly off in the distance. Oh, yeah. And then maybe that's how you get to three, because like the bad guys spot Jerry B, and like, oh, we're going oh. after him. And so they kidnap Jerry B and his family, and it's like a take. And then it's a take. And then Mike Col- the- <laughs> Coulter has to come save Jerry B's family oh, in like, yeah. the third movie, and then those two team up, mm-hmm. and again, and so that's how you really. It's like you kind of skip Jerry B in number two, but mm-hmm. for playing three, you bring the boys back together again, and uh, you know what? Get, get the studios on the phone. I got I got playing two and three coming at you right now. I don't know how you get playing. Yeah, you have to work on a. a pl- you, you have, have to work, work a plane in. into all yeah. of these. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess. Oh, you know what you do? You do. Uh, the people kidnap Jerry B or Jerry B's family, or whatever. They're in a plane, so Jerry B has to get Mike Coulter on a plane to chase them down in mm. plane, and they have to like hop on that plane while they're in their plane. <laughs> And then you, or you have like plane on plane fights. Oh, okay. Uh, Sounds awesome, Steve. <laughs> no, the second one is set on a train, and the third one involves cars, so it's plane, train, automobile. <laughs> and that's the trilogy. And uh, Martin Short's the bad guy in number three. Wait, no. Steve, said Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Sorry. Steve Martin and John Candy. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh yeah, we didn't mention how the bad guy dies in one of the a, a great villain death. Yeah, put it on the list of good deaths. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's it's dumb on his part, but it it kind of makes sense because you're going for a direct hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at the I think he's gonna pull the trigger. 
He may have. Oh, for sure. Um, so at the end of the movie, they have a huge gunfight um, at, the, at the plane and they're taken off and pretty much all the bad guys are dead except for two guys. I mean, there's more coming, but yeah, the, the first um, wave. So it's just the, the, the boss guy and one of his henchmen and they're like loading up an RPG. And uh, before the bat, before the, the second guy, is that the word. RPG? Yeah, Rocket Propel Grenade. Oh, okay. I'm just thinking of the games. What, what'd you Role playing game. Oh. An RPG. Okay, go on. I think it's RPG. <laughs> now you're now you're messing. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, rocket launcher. Rocket launcher, yeah, it's a rocket launcher. Um, kills the one guy, and so now it's up to the boss guy to use it. And so he like drives way ahead of the, the plane, uh, parks it in front, and then is like, the plane is coming at him. If he blows this thing up in front of him, the plane will probably skid into him and yeah. he will die. Yeah. And maybe that's his plan. He's like, I'm okay with it as long as these motherfuckers yeah. don't get away. Okay. Like they said in the Ant-Man trailer beforehand, like, I don't have to win. You just have to lose. We both just have to yeah. lose. Yeah. Um, so he, but instead of shooting, the plane... Starts going up, and then... Landing gear's down. The landing gear's down, and then he just splatters this guy across the runway with his <laughs> landing gear. Just takes it to the just, face. Not just the dude. It, like, destroys Into the car, yeah. too. And uh, I laughed out loud. I, I it, was, it was pretty awesome. It was I, great. I enjoyed it. Um, it's the same sort of Prometheus thing of, like, stop running in a straight line. It's like, okay, I see the planes coming. You don't want to shoot the rocket launcher. It's going to blow you up. Just run off to the side. Blow it up as it's passing you, man. Yeah, it's a big plane. It's, yeah. It should be hard to miss. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but see, if, if he, he, like, if it was stuck or something and he's trying to get it out and he gets it loose at the last second, but he's, like, standing there loading it as it's coming. And it felt like he had plenty of time and it probably could have been helped with some better editing in that mm -hmm. spot. But it's like he just goes, eh, fuck it. I'll just try to stop it with my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because that always works. It does. Um, yeah, but that, that, that's it. I, I had a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry B's great. Uh, I'd like to see my Coulter as Steel. Um, and I and bring bring me playing two and three. And and I've I've we probably mentioned it before, but I've always thought Jerry B would have been a better Craven the Hunter. He just yeah. seems he's got like a build. He's got a gruff, but he also could be. You know, uh, of high society if necessary, yeah. but he's handsome and charming. I I think he's got everything that Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson doesn't. Yeah, I I think the only thing holding JB back is his age. I think I would have wanted him as Craven the Hunter like a decade ago. Sure, not so much now. Yeah. For Spider Man Four, when Sam Raimi was going to do Spider Man Four, yeah. that would have been a perfect time for him to be Craven the Hunter. Probably. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what I like about him? They're not trying to hide his. Scottish accent anymore. Yeah. It's like don't don't bother trying to do anything else. You sound kind of weird, and a Scot Scottish person can live in America. It's fine. Yep, it's no big deal. So yeah, that's that's plain. I I think I'll give it a I'll give it a B, probably a B. Uh, I would say B minus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a yeah, high, B, yeah, but B a minus. high B minus. B minus plus. <laughs> B minus plus. Yeah. <laughs> B point five. So the other big release this weekend that we saw was missing the not quite sequel of Searching, but was directed by the guys who edited Searching, I believe. Yeah, there was a nod to the story of Searching at the very beginning of this movie. Um, so it is a de facto sequel. Sure. In the same universe, told the same sort of way, but not necessarily ultra connected. Um, yeah. So you invited me to watch this movie with you. Yep, yep. I had not heard of it. I When you told me about it, I was like, oh, like searching. And you're like, yeah, it's a sequel searching. <laughs> I was like, oh, OK, that makes sense. Uh, I didn't know this movie existed. I just it just seemed like, oh, this is a just a cash grab thing for, for teens. This is the teen mm -hmm. version of it because mm -hmm. it stars uh, young Storm Reed, who you've seen on like Euphoria and mm -hmm. a bunch of other shit. Um, you say a bunch of other shit, but I only know her from Euphoria. I, I know she's been in a bunch of other shit. Okay. I haven't seen her in a bunch of other shit. Uh, 
So I had no faith in this movie going in. Uh, but I, I actually had a good time. I don't mm-hmm. think I liked it as much as Searching. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that the gimmick would wear off having seen it done so well in Searching. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought it was used to great effect. Yeah. Um, the, the told through the computer screen uh, film that this is. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was well put together. Yeah, I like, th- I think as a whole, this is a more interesting story, but it's a more convoluted story. Yeah. I don't believe it as much. I think searching is a little more realistic, except for the ending where she survived on rainwater being trapped in a crack or whatever. I like that more than the ending of this movie, but... Nah, nah. Uh, So this is a story of young girl. I don't remember her name. Do you remember her name? Haley? Bailey? Riley? Jiley? Haley? Haley? Uh, a (laughs) A young girl whose mother is going on a big trip with her new boyfriend. Her own dad died years ago because of some sort of brain thing. And so she's she's not really liking this new man in her mom's life. But, you know, who is she to complain? June. June? And they call her Junebug. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Where did I get Riley? Doily. Um, so they they uh, they go on, on a trip and she throws a party. Uh, like, okay, let me side note here. You're going to throw a party when your mom's out of town. Don't do it the night before she's supposed to come back. So you have to rush that morning to clean it up. Yeah, I know she just goes on task rabbit and someone else cleans it up. And it's not a part of the story, but it's just one of those stupid things of she's going to be gone all weekend. Throw it on Friday. It gives you all of Sunday to clean up and then you pick her up Monday. What was her plan there? I don't know. Anyhow, Kids. So she goes to pick up her mom from the airport and she never shows up and she has gone missing. And so she uses clues on the computer of text messages and photos and, uh, you know, talking to the bellhop and yada, yada, yada uh, to kind of figure out what happens. And it turns out like her mom and the boyfriend got kidnapped while they were on vacation. And so she's working with the police and it becomes some big uh, big story nationwide, but then things start coming out. It wasn't actually her mom. It was an actress hired to pretend to be her mom. And uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think we necessarily need to spoil this one because this is a mystery, and 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 it's an interesting mystery. It's one I didn't see coming until I saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. It's one that you really couldn't piece this together until your moments before, and yeah. and they kind it's of like. An hour in before you're like, oh, I, I think I, I think know this. where this is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I I thought this was a, a really well-made movie. And I, I can only imagine how tough it is to make this. It's yeah, one I'd thing to make so... like, like CG robots fighting and everything. But to have to just fake all these all these screens and all these windows and have it work with all the things you have filmed. It's It's got to be such an undertaking. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be really interested to see the script of this, too, because like, I yeah. imagine as like because it's a very dialogue heavy movie because you have to kind of like talk the whole time. But mm-hmm. also it's very descriptive in terms of like you have to like write down, I would imagine, yeah. everything that you're character is seeing on the screen. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'd be wondering if it's like actually a, a small script and they're just like not really detailing all that much stuff. It's like she sees on the computer this happens, and then they kind of yeah. like fill in the blanks in between. Or if it's yeah. just like everything is descriptive. Yeah, it could then... be like she pulls up a note and takes notes, but on the screen you see every little note right, that right. she takes. Yeah, you know? yeah, and then and then you have little like the hesitating thing of she goes to type something and deletes it, and then types something else and hovers the mouse over something, but decides to not click on it. Is that actually written in the script? Or is that things that they develop after right. the fact? Yeah, that would be would be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if it is just all in the script. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the main actress was fine. I yeah. wasn't blown away by her. 
She's one of my least favorite parts of Euphoria. She, even though her character is good, especially against Rue and how shitty yeah. Rue is, there's some just something about her that just I don't I don't love. Well, in her defense, on that show, it's just I, I don't think they really give her much to do, or maybe just enough to do. Mm-hmm. And then you're also going against like all these people who are just all putting in Emmy worthy performances. Yeah. So it's kind of just like you're playing like. 10th fiddle in a show where everyone's great Mm -hmm. um so i don't really blame her for that uh she wasn't bad in this but i just thought she could have been play replaced with any actress Mm -hmm. really and probably would have been uh just as fine um the the ending i i didn't love i was more i wanted to be I just wanted it to be something else. I can't really get into it if you're if you're saying. Well, I mean, we, we can not... if you want to talk about it. I just didn't want to get into such details that I'm spoiling every little thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it makes sense. There's there's only no, so it, many ways you can take it. It 100 percent makes sense. I'm I'm okay with it. It's like I see why the story went the way it did. It's just when I'm spending the first hour going like, oh, what could this be? What could this be? And then it ends in a way where it's like, oh, I've kind of seen this movie before. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, give me give me the con man story of like, what's the bigger play here? What's the uh, like, what's a connecting tissue to someone's past that maybe we haven't seen? And like, that's there, but it's just not the one I wanted. Yeah, it's it's, like, it's not a bad choice. It's just not the choice. I, I it, 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 it's, it's the beginning of the movie. Them saying like, oh, it's too bad. We dropped that gun into the ocean. And then at the end the ocean spit the gun out and you're like, oh, well, that was convenient. It's just kind of like this thing you're not supposed to think about. And then it appears at the end and go, yeah. ha ha, what a surprise because you haven't been thinking about this. And it's a little cheap, but I think it all makes sense in context to the, the bigger story. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to say about this movie? Uh... I mean, it was one like through the whole thing you would lean over to me and go like, hey, I bet this is happening. And then two seconds later, boom, it says it. But then the very end of what you thought was wrong. You're like, oh, well, that makes me think of something different. It it does do a good job of making me constantly change my idea of what's going on. And that's that's a uh, a good cornerstone for mysteries to mm-hmm. take it's like as i'm watching it i'm coming up with new theories and new ideas yeah. and they're constantly being challenged and changed and i think that's great and that's why i enjoyed this movie because it worked it, it did stuff effectively and how it misled you and there was moments where it's like they say something or it's like hey about that oh uh, about that watch i left over at your place it's like okay well that's definitely gonna come back yeah. later um so like if you've seen movies, you still know it's like, okay, <laughs> that will come into play at some point. There's a point, reason a person said but, this out loud. Yeah, but how that comes into play might not be how you expect. Yeah. Um, or when that comes into play might not be how you expect. So it, it it's a well-crafted movie. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Javier. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Javi, as, as he's called. Uh, which is a... I think a little bit of a stretch. Sure. Uh, in terms of like, it's that thing in a movie where a character goes like, please, please help me do this really complicated thing for <laughs> days on end and yeah. get invested in my story, even though we don't know each other at all. Yep. You know, that classic trope. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, okay. Okay, I'll and do that. Now they're just like in this thing together. Yeah. Um, even though he could have been like, nah, I'll take the 18 bucks and then yeah, I'll be on I'll my way. Like a, no- like a normal person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... Honestly, Javier was the heart and soul of this movie. A uh, real, real cool guy, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and it just infuriated me to no end. Uh, here's a spoiler for you: um, she hires Javier. We won't say in what regard, mm-hmm. but he has a. It's like a Postmates kind of situation, and he has like two point five stars or something. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, this guy doesn't have a five star rating, <laughs> and it made me so angry. It's like, yeah, I, I'm sure like her one five star rating wouldn't change, but it's like it, this, it, it would jump him to to, to like a two point seven, you know. So I I needed to see some improvement. Like there's there's some character stuff with Javier that you know you get at the end, but I I wanted to see my man with five stars because he he earned it from this movie. You know what I bet it is? I bet when the story's done and we get to actually see a a TV movie version of 
this story because it does become a big national news thing. Uh-huh. So people pick it up and adapt it. And we see a little bit of it. I bet Javier wasn't even in that. I mm. bet they never even featured that. Nobody knows that. So it didn't affect him, you know, on, on his rating because people would have found out who he was and just bumped his rating up just to be nice, a nice person. You did this good thing, but he wasn't even probably mentioned in the movie. And that's why he still has that, that weak ass rating, but he's also just an electrician and a handyman, uh, not a, uh, check the, the hardware store and for, you know, secret cameras and stuff like that. So yeah. he could just be a really bad hardware. Uh, no, I, I'm not saying his, his stars aren't justified at the time, but I, and this is a solely me thing. I just wanted to see like one little title card at the end where it's like, here's Javi. And then in, uh, in the background, or like she contacts him on the app or something. It's like, oh, he's got five stars now. Or mm-hmm. like 4.5, anything. Yeah. Because uh, my man earned it. And he, I want good things for, for yeah. Javier. And, and, and uh, his, it was just a shame. His wrap up of like, oh, hey, look, I reconnected with my son and I got my ratings up. Something. <laughs> something. <laughs> or just like, oh, Javi, you, you met your son. I see you got your, your rating up higher. Like, oh, well, it was, it was thanks for that time we did the Oprah show together. I really bumped my rating. Something. Yeah. That's all I wanted. Yeah. He deserves it uh do you uh, anything else to say yeah I, I was just you know this it's a it's a good mystery that i think the best way i was i was telling my roommate you it doesn't confuse you at all like by the end of it you understand it you're still not confused mm-hmm. and you also don't figure it out from minute one you figure it out like right before you're given the information and that's like the best sort of mysteries where you go like oh i see and like you you feel smart because you figure it out before they tell you and that's what this movie is mm-hmm. uh oh another thing i wanted to talk about um and it's a classic uh movie tv thing i hate in movies and television when a character will text someone or message someone via email and literally a second later they respond and like mm-hmm. they have the it's like mm-hmm. sometimes that happens where yeah. it's like you're if it, they were actually engaged in a conversation yeah. i was already like, scrolling oh, reddit and a message popped up sure but this the swift responses by every person in this movie mm-hmm. uh drove me insane because it's <laughs> it's it's a not, movie steve it's not, and it's like i know it's a pacing thing and it's just yeah. like, it's yeah, easier do you, to, do you want them to sit there on the like the dot 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 and like is yeah you know, i do <laughs> and then the movie just comes screeching to a halt. Uh, it, it it's fine i get it i would if i was a director i'd do the same thing uh-huh but that doesn't mean I have to like it. But it's it's just like the oh, does he use a pa- does this master criminal use a password for his normal email and for his diabolical was, shit? I, Absolutely. I was it's, gonna bring that up too. It's just like it's a good thing every character in every movie only has one password they yeah. use for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could give thing. you my password right now, and it would get you into one of my things. You would have to figure out how to change the combination to get into the other things. <laughs> I use very similar things, but even if you know one, you're only gonna get into to, you know one of my you're gonna get my instagram but you're not gonna get my twitter yeah uh and it's always that thing of just like oh what what's their password and there's always like a picture of like their dog by their yeah. desk it's like oh scruffy one too <laughs> yeah. like, oh here's a picture of uh their their vacation from 12 years ago and it'll be like mayan ruins 2022 and it's like ding ding oh my god yeah it's, why it's like i I understand the concept of like, oh, I always forget my password. Let me put something that reminds me of my password next to it. But it's like that should just be a trigger for the person who's plugging it in, mm-hmm. not for anyone who's just looking at it. <laughs> I, I would uh, love to see a, a parody movie where they're looking around and it's just like they see a picture of him with his dog. And so they type in the password like picture of me and my dog. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> that would be funny. I, I will give the movie credit that they do something smarter with the password in terms of just like the mom always instead of E's puts backward threes. Yeah. It's like, okay, I can work with that. And Mm -hmm. that's slightly more believable because they are changing up passwords Mm -hmm. based off of one continuous thing. But it's still like a little bit of like a, all right, come on. But once again, it's movie stuff. It's just nitpicking. It's stuff. Uh, It's fine. But it's just one of those things you're just like, "Ah." I roll. Yeah. Uh, 
all that complaining being said, uh, thanks for inviting me to the movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it more than I thought. Um, do I need to see Searching, Missing 3, whatever yeah, that would be called? One? Searching, Missing, um, Looking. Look. Mm. But it could be like a dating app thing. And you do maybe uh, a horror sort of thing. Uh, and so they're looking for someone, looking, but then looking they, go, they go missing. And their friend's like, she went on a date with this guy. And now she's, she's nowhere to be found. I'm looking for my friend. Looking for love, looking for your friend. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Got okay. it. Done. Okay. Done. Call, call up the boys. Call the studio. The, the studio Hollywood. So, uh... I, I like that. Yeah. And I, I just thought of another thing that ended with ING. Yeah. <laughs> the, the ING trilogy. <laughs> Pooping. <laughs> Uh, so, so we got to use these smart toilets to track down the killer. <laughs> okay. By looking at what they ate, we think they were at, at uh, General Lee's Chinese palace. <laughs> the toilet's just like, feed me. <laughs> Fill feed me up, up, Chandler. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> well, we're going to have to cut all that because no one's going to get that reference. If you get that reference, please leave a comment. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, there was a Ch- what weird friends <laughs> there was episode. Yeah. There was an episode of Friends where Chandler was taking Shitting shits. in Joey's mouth. Uh, oh, <sighs> so what's what's next week? Uh, Do you even know what's coming out next week? Not at all. There's a movie called Fear, and uh, pass. I think I actually okay. You remember when you were talking about the blackening? Uh, yeah. Did you do you remember when that was supposed to be coming out? Because this movie, watching the trailer, makes me think it is the blackening, and then they changed the name to Fear because it is an all black cast <laughs> going to a cabin, and there's some spooky like serial killer shit going on. Let me uh, let me let me look it up. All Hang right. on. One well, second. it's called Fear, and I'm gonna go see that. So I, I don't know if you're you're interested in in it, but. Fear, uh, Infinity Pool, which I know I saw. Oh, yeah. What was Infinity Pool about again? I don't know. I just know Mia Goth is in it, and she's once again unhinged. Oh, is it by Scars? I don't want to know any sort of story beats. Isn't Skarsgård in it? Wasn't he the... I have no idea. Uh, I, I want to go in completely blind. All I've seen a couple of like quick images and it looks weird. And Mia Goth is, you know, as of right now, she can do no wrong. So yeah, I'll see, I'll see those two movies and we'll round out January with more horror movies. But then is, is Ant-Man after that? Or is that, that's like Ant-Man's three Ant-Man's February 17th. Okay. So, so we, got, we got some time. We got some time. Uh, well, it, we can always see the whale, you know? I, I do plan on seeing the whale. I think uh, the uh, the Oscar nominations are going to be out on Tuesday, so we oh. could always talk about that and make our predictions. We could do Oscar predictions. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm always so so good at. <laughs> I just nail it every year. I was go- I went to Fear on IMDb and went to the trivia to see if it was like this was changed from the black. So I mm-hmm. just type in blackening. Don't. You son of a bitch. No, the blackening is a twenty twenty. Two movie. Oh. Seven hmm. black friends who go away from the other. So did it already it came just, out? I guess it came. It might have been one of those. A limited Sundays release. That, yeah, and it's okay. expected in June. Oh, uh, okay. So it's just another uh, black friend. Another all black uh, scary yeah, horror yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. Next week is either The Whale or maybe Fear after I watch this trailer because I have no fucking clue <laughs> what it is. All right. Well, we'll probably do some Oscar stuff, too, because we're schmucks. Indeed. Well, that was fun. Uh, if, any any final parting words, Steve? Um, if you're a Ninja Turtles fan, read The Last Ronin. And I recently started playing Shredder's Revenge again because oh, yeah. it's free. With, on, on Netflix, Netflix. <laughs> which is uh, wild. I, I, so weird. So I'm playing Shredder's Revenge on my phone, and uh, it's uh, Shredder's Revenge is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, if you want to get in contact with us, we are at WRPL Podcast on Gmail, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, yeah, if you understand the Chandler reference, uh, let us know. Uh, as always, I'm Ben. And I'm Steve. Good night.
Give me the goo. I want the gooey. 